All right, how's it going, y'all? So today we are going to be using a Raspberry Pi to put the Smart back in Smart Home by installing HomeBridge on it. And so what HomeBridge does is it solves a huge issue and probably the biggest issue with Smart Homes today is it allows you to plug pretty much any device into Apple HomeKit. And so the device does not have to support Apple HomeKit and Apple does not have to support the device but HomeBridge allows them to communicate and actually go through and add pretty much everything into your smart home. So right now, something that pretty much anybody who's building a smart home right now for sure knows, and I, I've inherited it, is the fact that right now there's so many walled gardens between what can operate with what standard. So there are so many devices out there that only work with one device, and Apple HomeKit, while I do love it and it's probably my favorite implementation, its biggest issue is the fact that it has a very stringent requirement for what is allowed to be an Apple HomeKit. I really like those requirements. It's things like it has to be completely available offline. So even if your internet dies, the entire thing still has to work on a local area network. It's got to have X, Y, and Z security requirements. It's got to have all of these different requirements and make it so that it has by far the fewest number of compatible devices in it, though the devices that do work with it tend to work really well, in my opinion. And so what HomeBridge does is it supplements that issue and lets pretty much anybody build a plugin to duct tape together all of these different things so they can all be in the same Apple HomeKit environment. And so I personally know this firsthand because I just purchased a home and it happened to be a smart home. Every single device in the house, every single light switch in the entire house is controllable from a smart device. And the guy who set it up, he talked me through it and we actually had a few different meetings on how everything is set up, but he set everything up where he's in the Google ecosystem and I'm just not, I'm in the Apple ecosystem. And so I wanted everything in HomeKit because it really works well for me because I've got all Apple devices. And so to do this, I had to duct tape a lot of things together. About half of my lights, he had two different types of lights in the house. Half of them worked in HomeKit, They're the Lutron ones. They are awesome, they work really well and they just instantly worked into HomeKit. All I needed was the bridge and everything started working immediately. But the rest of them were on the Zigbee standard and so he did not have a controller that was HomeKit accessible. And so what I had to do was I basically went through and I installed HomeBridge on a VM and because of that, now I'm able to run everything. He also had a Google Nest and a Google front door. And so I was also able to bring both of those things into my home. And so it just made it so much easier. So I'll just really quickly before we go over this, kind of show off my home setup over here and really tell you how everything in this house is accessible by HomeKit. It is everything pretty much has it. So I can lock the front door right here. I don't know if you were able to hear that, but my front door just locked. So now if we go into the rooms, all the different rooms in here are all able to be controlled completely from here, even though most of these devices are not HomeKit accessible. All right, and so now we'll just go ahead and open up my HomeBridge setup right here, and so you can see the interface with it. I'm gonna go over how to set up on the Raspberry Pi, but I feel like it's always good to start with just what this can do and how everything works together. And so right now we've got different plugins and everything running, and so if we go into plugging, we can see all the different devices that are hooked up into HomeBridge. And so what we've got right here is really just two things right now. So I've got the HomeBridge Nest, and that is allowing me to operate both my front door as well as the Nest. Google has really locked it down, so you can't actually directly interface with them. And so it is a bit more of a tedious process than the HomeBridge Hubitat. So Hubitat was what he was using. It's a little box that allows you to interface with Zigbee different devices. And so he used Hubitat for everything. And so there's just a plugin for Hubitat that allows you to instantaneously plug it into your own HomeKit setup. And me not really having a ton of knowledge on how all this stuff worked, I was able to get this stuff set up and running in just a few hours when it was a very complex setup. Honestly, half the setup time probably was just organizing everything into the right rooms and naming everything and figuring out what everything was. And so it's so easy to go ahead and use. And so in this video, what I'm gonna do is set it up on a Raspberry Pi. And so that way it's a super cheap device that you can use. And it's actually got a fair amount of power under the hood. And what we're gonna be using it with is this guy right here. So this right here is a little real link security camera. They did send it to me, but I just grabbed a random security camera for this video because we're actually gonna be setting up a plugin that allows you to bring pretty much any device, any streaming security camera into Apple HomeKit. And so we're gonna be setting it up. 
I'm interested to see what the frame weight rate is like because it actually takes a fair amount of power under the hood. And so I'm interested to see how the Raspberry Pi will keep up. You're probably gonna want a heat sink on there at the minimum and probably just get a case with a fan on it too if you are gonna be running anything like this. The vast majority of these setups are all very low power because it's just sending light switches, but this is actually gonna be doing some encoding of video. And so the way Homebridge works is it's just a bridge. And so pretty much what it acts like is it acts like a normal HomeKit device. It does say, oh, it's unverified, but it just says, hey, I've got all these devices by me. And so all the devices will communicate with Homebridge through the Raspberry Pi, and then the Raspberry Pi will communicate with the Apple network and be able to interface with everything. And that way you have full control over everything. Though do note, you have to have this thing running constantly because if it's off, now you can't control those lights. So that, that's just what you've got to deal with. So that's why a Raspberry Pi is a great option for these because they're really cheap and can be very low powered. Now for this, what you're gonna need is pretty much any Raspberry Pi will probably do. If you are gonna be trying to do video, you're gonna want, well, we're gonna be testing the limits of this Raspberry Pi because I'm throwing it probably the hardest thing right now. And so you are going to want a Raspberry Pi and either a memory card or a USB stick. And we're just gonna go ahead and get started with this thing. All right, and so setting this up is actually really easy. The first thing we're gonna to need to do is just download the Raspberry Pi imager if you haven't already. and just download the Raspberry Pi imager real quick. All right, and so now that that's downloaded, we're just gonna go ahead and open her up and just drop it in your applications folder. And we'll just go ahead and open her up. Now you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and just plug in your SD card or your, in my case, your USB flash drive because I hate SD cards if at all possible. And so now once that's all plugged in, it's super easy, just go ahead and choose OS. And then we're gonna go ahead and scroll down to other specific person OS's purpose. And just go ahead and download Homebridge. So this is going to basically have the entire install in here. You will be able to install other stuff on top of it as well. If you're doing a setup where you've already got a bunch of Raspberry Pis and you've already got a bunch of stuff loaded on a Raspberry Pi, you're gonna to wanna to go through and just follow the regular setup process for that. But this pre-built package just makes it so much easier. And Raspberry Pis are pretty cheap, so you can buy a lower powered one and just always keep it dedicated. That way, if you're tinkering around and accidentally brick the thing or mess anything up, you're not gonna mess up your lights. For me, it's actually not that big of a deal because the way my setup is, I actually have every single light switch still works without having contact with Homebridge or anything like that. That's because they're all physical light switches, which in my experience is by far the best way to go because stuff will always break. And then just go ahead and select your boot media and hit install on it. All right, and so now we're just gonna go ahead and wait for it to write. All right, and so now that is finally done. So we can go ahead and boot her on up. So now I'll just go ahead and eject it. And we'll go ahead and put it in the Pi and go ahead and start her up. All right, and so now to get to the Homebridge plugin, you have to try to figure out what the IP address was it was by just opening up your network and seeing what connected. That's what you can do sometimes. Or you can go to homebridge.local is what this setup should default to the host name. And then it is 85, eight, port 8581. And boom, there we go. This should be the page for your, your Raspberry Pi. And just go ahead and give it the normal username and password is admin admin, I believe. And we are going to want to go ahead and change that. But the first thing we need to go ahead and do is bring this into our actual setup. And so to do that, just plug out your phone and just go ahead and open up your HomeKit app. And we're just gonna go ahead and hit add in the upper right hand corner. And we're gonna add an accessory. And it's gonna use the camera detect that box right there. All right, and so there you can just go ahead and hit it. You click on it. It's going to say, hey, this is not supported because it's your own hosted one. And so you can just hit add anyway. All right, and so now it is connected to our home bridge. So now our, anything we add in here will be available on our Apple HomeKit. All right, and so now before we do anything, let's just go ahead and change the admin password. 
I mean, it might not be that big of a deal to you. I mean, it's really not that big of a deal if somebody has access to this, but it's just a good idea to go ahead and change this to something else. That way it's just not a admin admin password. I mean, honestly, somebody's just gonna delete your lights or something, but it's just best practice too. So now we'll go into the status dashboard right here and we can see most of the stuff that's going on here. And we can also go through and start installing plugins from up here. And this is where we can install anything. And you'll wanna go ahead and just Google them first. It's just easier that way. Just say Homebridge security camera plugin. And so you'll, you can find them very easily like that. And so there we've got, we've got Homebridge camera FFMPG. And so this is actually the one I wanna go ahead and use. It just takes a little while to figure out the exact ones because everything's a little bit different. And so there's Homebridge camera FFMPG right here that we'll go ahead and use. And it just goes through and installs everything really easily for you. All right, and so now we can go ahead and add in cameras. And you'll also be able to get to this config page from a different place. And so what we can do is just add in the name here and every plugin is going to be different. So we'll just say, and I'm gonna go ahead and grab this RSTP URL from RioLink. Just search how to get your specific camera into this RSTP setting. And so basically what you wanna do is just type it in here. Everybody's got it a little differently. And then just go ahead and scroll down to the bottom here and hit save. And it is a bit of trial and error constantly. And so another thing you do is you just have to restart anytime you add in a plugin a lot of time, but it's super fast. It's very snappy, so you don't have to worry about that too much. All right, so this is just gonna be a quick hard cut fast forward. It does take a little bit of tuning. So I probably picked probably one of the hardest examples possible, which is a security camera where there's just a lot going on and the Raspberry Pi can kind of get overloaded here. The rest of my setups did not take this much tuning, but basically what you have to do is you go through and you figure out how to optimize your thing. It does take a little bit of tinkering. It's not perfect, but I'll just show anybody who's interested the config that I went with that works actually pretty well. And so I'm able to actually bring in the camera and I'll leave a link to the article that gave me this. Um, one thing I did here on a couple of forums is that RSTP is better than RTMP for video cameras, but I just could not get RSTP working together right here. I'm gonna actually go through and do a full video on this. This is just a quick temporary setup and the one thing I was gonna show, but you can get better quality than this. But if we go in right here, we can see, boom, camera's right there and it's looking at me. And so now I can just access the stream right here by clicking on it. And it does take a second to initialize. I've got a lot of stuff going on and I think it is also slightly overloading the Raspberry Pi and RTMP is not great. But as you can see here, boom and it's able to work. And so just like that, you're able to bring pretty much anything, even if it was never designed to be, into HomeKit, into HomeKit, which is just awesome. And so there's so many different use cases for this, and they can run on just a simple Raspberry Pi. All right, well, that's gonna be it for this tutorial. Go and leave any other HomeBridge plugins you'd love me to test out in the comments below, and anything else you'd like to see set up on a Raspberry Pi. And have a good one, bye.